Hey, welcome back to the channel. All right, it's time for October's rankings. I'm very excited to get this information out to you. It always creates a fun conversation. And remember, the point of this is to have a snapshot on what it is I and the team that helps me out with this, what it is that I think the relative value of a champion is, how widely usable are they? And then also for us to have a lot of fun having a conversation about it as we go. Remember, the spreadsheet will be linked in the in the description of this video. And anytime you see a link, you can go ahead and click on that. It'll take you to one of my videos or a video of another content creator who I really like, who I think did an excellent, excellent job uh, explaining the champion. Check those out before you rank up a champion. All right, I'm gonna take a few minutes to explain the process, the format, and introduce the team that helps me out with this. If you are not interested in it, you can go ahead and go to the description of this video. There is timestamps or there are timestamps. It will take you directly to the rankings themselves. And while you're there, you hit the thumbs up and consider subscribing, maybe even share it. I would really, really appreciate it. You're still here. That means you wanna hear this. Here are the tiers. We have added a tier, which is the pre 12.0 switch tier. In essence, and there's a little bit of tongue in cheek with all of this folks, but it's, we don't read nodes. That's how good these defenders are, or these attackers are. Often, often being like, let's just say 30%, I don't know, but a lot, enough. You find yourself in situations where it almost doesn't matter what the node or the defender are capable of. You've brought in this champion and they are going to at least get you through. They're going to get you through. They can turn the node off or something like that. You, you know, you see the champions that are in there. Top shelf. This is the best of the best. In my opinion, this is kind of like, this is how good a champion in a game this complex should be. This is the limit. These champions are awesome. Super premium is when folks ask me, the most common question I get on stream is, who should I rank up? Should I rank up this champion? If my immediate instinct is yes, then they go in this tier. If my immediate is yes, and then I start to think it through, they go in this tier. If my immediate instinct is like, yeah, I think so, let's ask some questions, then they're in premium, and then call as they have a job to do. And then I want to very quickly introduce you into the crew that helps me put this together. Now, I've been doing this tier list for a year now. It has evolved, and I really like it. It is a tremendous amount of fun. It's a lot of work, but it's a lot of fun. And I do all this based on my own experience playing the game. I've completed almost all of the content in the game except for 7.2. I need to work through that. But I play for uh, for Loki. I'm in uh, Masters Tier Alliance Tier 1. I see all the videos that they put in line chat. I really love watching YouTube videos on this game we love. And then I'm really fortunate that I get to actually get to know they're on my Discord server in line chats. These eight names here that you see. These are the folks that help me out with this. I put it together. They go through it with a fine tooth comb. Put a ton of time, given their opinions, their experience, their game knowledge into this. We have lengthy, lengthy discussions. And they do an excellent job. You'll see quite a few videos from them actually linked in the discussion or in the uh, spreadsheet above. They all, in fact, Jacob doesn't even have a YouTube channel, but there's varying levels of activity on there. But these are some of the channels I go to because I want to get better at this game. And I really cannot suggest them more and thank all eight of them enough for helping me out with this project. All right, you've made it this far. Let's get into the rankings. Now, hopefully you've at least listened to the methodology and formatting once, right? At least once. So you kind of have an idea of what we're going over here, but I will introduce quickly each tier. And I really want to highlight, I want to emphasize the one of the main goals I'm trying to accomplish with this tier list, or there's two, is that this is just a springboard. This is for you to have a quick snapshot. What does Vega and the people who help him out with this, what do they think? Also, how is the game evolving? And then you go and do your research, you play the champion, you make sure you enjoy them and you make sure they fit into your roster well. And then also to show you, there are a ton of very good, usable, extremely effective, I know the E word, champions in this game, all the way down to premium. I consider premium champions to in many cases be very, very worthy of your rank three uh, rank up materials. Call, we'll get into what that is as we go. Let's start off. This is the new tier, the new tier that has been added. I think it makes this tier list, even though I want to keep things very simple so I can highlight how many good champions there are in the game. 
this tier makes it make more sense. Uh, this is an evolving tier list. It's been going on for about a year now. This makes the most sense to me. I feel really good about it. The people who help me out feel good about it. Here we go. I'm calling it the pre 12.0 Scarlet Witch tier. If you played this game before, then you know what that was like. You don't read nodes. You don't read nodes. You often do not have to. Let's jump into it in Mystic. That is obviously Doom. Obviously, sometimes you just find yourself and you're like, I didn't even read the node. I've got them in the Doom cycle. It's going to be fine. Archangel and Magneto. I actually do not think Magneto is necessarily the second best mutant in the game, but he completely fits his criteria. If you have him, you know what he does to metal champions, except for Nimrod, in this game. If that continues to evolve, where there's more and more metal or tech champions like Nimrod coming in that he can't reduce their ability accuracy and those sorts of things, we may revisit it. But currently, he just shuts that off and there's enough metal champions in the game. He deserves this. Quake is Quake. We're all very familiar with what she does. Ghost with the synergies and Awakened. You often just don't even care what the node is. Uh, skill. I'll get to Fury when it's time, but you saw a little pause there for me. And then Cosmic, of course, is Corvus and Hercules, both with, they're different, but similar, can't die mechanics. They're both very, very powerful champions, even without that, but they have it. And I have found myself multiple times realizing like, oh, I've completely messed up. I have not played this well. I didn't read the note. I didn't understand it, but Hercules is immortal. I will be fine. So that is that list. I will not go over every single champion. We're gonna go over the highlighted ones in that high in a hot pink, so they stand out. But I did want to go through that because that tier is new for my rankings. I feel very, very good about it. Make sure to let me know how you uh, feel about it. I think it makes the rest of the rankings make more sense when you look at them kind of from a broad perspective. All right, now we're gonna get into the top shelf. There used to be the old uh, saying, you know, if you just maxed out the five and you pulled the six, you're a little bit salty, but eventually you're okay with it. I still think that applies, but that's not the way I'm gonna completely look at it. This is just, they are the best. They are the best. They're the best in their class or the best in the game. This isn't just a class, uh, inter-class rankings. This is the whole, the whole game. Um, you can go through there. You see the ones that are highlighted or have the links. Uh, like this one is from myself. Uh, but as we go through, there are also from many other content creators that I happen to really enjoy. I think their video is very helpful. Make sure you check those out. All right, let's go ahead and go down here. We are going to get to Kitty Pride. Um, I think Kitty Pride pretty clearly should be in the pre 12.0 switch. If you're used to my rankings, you know, I start off conservatively. I would much rather tell you, I think this champion is going to be insane. But right now, let's just decide they're good. Let's see them earn it. Let's see them in the game for a few months. And then I'd rather be wrong that way. I'd rather be wrong that way than tell you, oh my God, they are the best champion in the game. You're gonna destroy content. And then we find out that maybe that's not true. I don't wanna lead you astray in that way. If I'm gonna make an error, I'd rather have it be on the side of being too conservative. That being said, I really think she should be in the pre 12.0 switch when you got her synergized up and awakened. We've seen what she can do. She is incredible. She is amazing. Colossus, the reason Colossus is in hot pink is because I actually moved him down in the previous rankings. And it was one of those ones where it just didn't make sense. I don't think he's as good as Apocalypse, Professor X and Omega Red. I really don't. And there's a variety of reasons for it. And if you want to, you can come on a stream one day. We'll talk about why. That being said, I do think he's better than the champions in Super Premium. Moving Archangel and Magneto and the way that tier has been defined allowed Colossus to be put back up. I think this makes complete sense. He is a great champion. He is great. And I know so many of you are clearing so much content with him. He deserves that place. That's why he is in the hot pink. We're gonna go ahead and continue to scroll down. I am gonna talk briefly about Fury. So I am going to change this over to the hot pink. Uh, Killmonger, it's the exact same scenario as Colossus. It really bothered me actually to move Killmonger down to super premium. I know how good he can be. He belongs in that top shelf. I think, I know he does. I don't think I know he does. Fury and, uh, we're gonna talk about Fury and Human Torch here together. For single fights, they both can be pre 12.0 switch. They both can. Right when you use torches pre-fight, you just melt. It, don't, it does not matter. Almost, it really sometimes does not matter. The node he completely gets around them. The thing is, is you don't know when the pre-fight is going to come back. He's still very effective, but remember, this is like 
You don't even read the nodes tier. I think he's amazing. He bongs her. For Fury, in that first fight, knowing you can send them to uh, send them red, his ability to even shrug passives, right? When he turns into a second life, it is incredible. It is amazing. I think he's appropriately ranked, though. I think he's appropriately ranked because then the rest of the time, you're playing him at a very low health pool, which again, I'm not criticizing this guy. Keep in mind, he is in the top shelf category. He is in the best of the best. It just makes me not feel comfortable putting him in that pre-12.0 switch. Maybe things will change. That's how I feel. And uh, Killmonger, or I'm sorry, Captain Marvel movie. Think of her exactly the same way as Killmonger and and, um, and Colossus. These are excellent champions. I think they're better than the champions I have in Super Premium. But the way it was previously set up, I don't think it made sense for them to be in the top tier. Now that we've moved uh, Corvus and Hercules up, I think Captain Marvel makes a lot of sense where she's at. She can do tremendous damage. I mean, we're seeing like Kai is do great things on his channel with her. Uh, I really think that she is appropriately ranked now, and I don't see that changing in the near future. All right, let's move to super premium. I think this is where things start to get really interesting and a lot of fun. Um, R3, yes. Remember that, so this category, it's if you come onto the, my stream or you are on one of my uh, videos and you ask me, hey, should I rank up this champion? One of the ways it's very clear for me that they're in the super premium is I will say, yeah, yes. The first thought that comes to my head is yes. And then I start running through the questions. Well, what contents are you facing? Uh, what do you need on your account? Do you need someone who nullifies? Do you need power gain? And then I start to kind of ask questions or run through just more or less to make sure that it makes sense, right? But I'm, I'm pretty sure the default instinct for me is, yeah, take them to rank three. It makes sense. Congratulations. You got a great, great champion on your hands. Uh, so we'll go ahead and scroll through here. We're not going to get to anyone until we get to Doc Ock, who is a recent um, promotion, right? He's recently been promoted. This is a whole folder here by Iron Patriot, who is a mythic summoner in our game. The guy is an incredible, incredible player. I think a lot of these are war videos. Doc Ock can be a little confusing to play. Check these out if you're interested and you're like, why is he up there? Well, this is why. Uh, and just because it's right there, I do want to make it clear. Mysterio, this is with the synergy. This is with that synergy. Once he's got that synergy with Penny, I think he deserves to be up there. Without it, he most definitely does not. All right, we'll continue to scroll down. This is an example of me being very conservative. King Groot and Venom Pool, maybe even Venom, but King Groot, Venom Pool, King Groot, maybe even more so. I could see getting moved up. I want to keep an eye on them. We've got a new war season started. We have 7.3 coming out. I want to keep an eye on them. They are incredible. And I th and I know this is their floor. I know this is absolutely their floor. I would not be surprised if in a month or two, we see them up in the top shelf. That's why they are highlighted in pink right now. Odin is a recent promotion. The guy is fantastic. He's taken a while to grow on us. I think a lot of it has to do with his introduction into the game, the massive, massive disappointment we felt, then him going away for a while, coming back. He is incredible. And I think he's one of those champions that's difficult for us to immediately realize are good. When they can do big yellow numbers, we're like, yeah, this is a great champion. That's not him as much, right? There's the secondary damage, but also he is so incredibly tanky and that true strike is very unique to uh, the Cosmic class, at least being native on a champion's abilities. Obviously, Corvus has it through a synergy. But check this out. Um, if you're curious, you're like, why is Odin up there? Check out this video. It's a very, very good guide. It is lengthy, but it's lengthy because it's detailed and you're getting a lot of nuanced conversation on it. Check it out. It is very, very worthwhile. And uh, I'm fully convinced that Odin is there. Very interested in taking my own to rank three as, uh, very, very soon. I have a couple Cosmic Tier 5 CC to spend. All right, let's go ahead and get into premium now. Same similar question, same similar thought process on this. Someone comes onto my stream is like, hey, Vega, should I rank up Hood? My first thought is, I think so. My first thought, yeah, I think so, right? Or should I do this champion for, for Thronebreaker? Yeah, yeah, you should. I think so. Yeah, let's talk it through a little bit. I'm a little more reserved. I want to know a little bit more about your account, how you're intending to use them or something like that. But this is a very good tier. You're in this tier. You are a quality champion that has a lot of uses of, across a broad amount of games and modes and nodes and defenders, okay? Hood is in the hot pink because 
I think he's going to get moved up. I really do. Panda Man Pete and Legacy have been showing me some very cool videos. I happen to be in there, BG. I've been seeing some very cool stuff. Legacy did an R3 Hood video. I was very impressed with Hood's buff, but I ended up ranking up a couple of Mystic Champions for uh, Defenders and stuff, so I haven't dove into Hood quite as much. But I think he's good, and he, I think he is definitely more than just a travel companion for Ghost teams. Uh, so keep that in mind. Take, keep an eye on Hood if you have Hood and you have some experience with him. Let me know if you, where you think he should be. Is he appropriately ranked, or should he be moved up there a little bit? Uh, let's go ahead and scroll on down. And you know what we're going to do? We're going to talk about science and tech together. And there's a reason for this. All of these champions in the hot pink, I could very much see being moved up. Miles Morales, I'm not so sure moved up a full tier, but moved up within his tier. But Mr. Negative, Spider-Man 99, Penny Parker, Nimrod, Punisher 99, and Silver Centurion, I could very much in the next month to three months see them potentially all of them, moving up into the super premium tier. I've done quite a bit of testing lately with Nimrod and Silver Centurion, and they impressed the absolute heck out of me. But like I said, I like to start conservatively. With Mr. Negative and the true uh, focus node being removed from more, I think we're going to see him a bit more, start seeing more of his uses and how broad they may be. Spider-Man 99, uh, you know, we don't get a ton of time here on in the CCP to test the champions, but I was actually pretty, I was pretty, pretty warm, pretty positive on him in my initial testing. I liked him and my buddy Strands is showing me some very, very cool videos of him soloing like mojos and things like this in war. Uh, I think we got an effective champion that as people get him, we'll see used more and more. spider Gwent, especially with that Penny synergy, we'll start to see how that works out. Miles Morales. Uh, Penny Parker, she's just so new. I think you need her awakened. You really want her awakened for the heal blocks and things like that. Nimrod, I've recently taken mine to rank three. I've put out the rank two video. I like him. I like him a lot. Uh, Punisher 99, Simula's got a video. In fact, when um, when this when my rankings video goes live, there will be a link to Simula's Punisher 99 video. I just forgot to update it. It will be in there. So if you're interested in that video, either check out Simula or uh, bring up this uh, spreadsheet. The link will be live when the video goes live. Silver Centurion, I did my own war video. And then uh, mu 8 here with War Machine. I don't know if War Machine's going to get moved up. But again, this is a very, very good tier. So keep that in mind. All right. Now we will continue to scroll on down. I know this is going to make quite a few of you very happy very happy in fact uh you're probably like dude that's not far enough uh hella should be in top shelf i have struggled with that i've i've seen a lot of the videos i've linked i mean bren here with this video he is in my own bg i have seen the videos he has done the amount of skill though the skill level to play her this way i mean it is bren msd uh you know buddy lee slayer of gods like level of skill karate mike legacy right like you have to be so good at this game to play her that way that i just want to make sure everyone realizes that i want to make sure you all realize that this is where i'm putting her i'm open to moving her up maybe one more tier but i'm going to continue to give this speech because i don't want someone to come on here See, like, oh, I just pulled pulled Hella. She's in the super premium. Okay, I'll definitely rank her over King Group. Ah, I'm like, oh no, no. Why would you do that? Why would you do that? Uh, and so that is that is kind of my concern because again, I'm doing this because I want to get information out, right? All right, let's go ahead and move and look at the call tier. Uh, this is they have a job to do. This for me is the minimum amount that is necessary from a champion of usefulness for them to be ranked. The next tier over is it's called, uh, I know you can't see it here, but it is called uh, not necessary. Let's not be mean. There is no reason for us to talk about these champions. They're basically memes. Uh, someone created them. Hopefully they get buffed one day, right? But the in the call tier, you have a job to do, right? You have this one job to do, or maybe you just love playing them. Like I have America Chavez at a rank three because I just happen to really like the character. But no, she shouldn't be up high, right? That's where she is. And I have purposely uh, put Gilly and Rag Thor in the hot pink. And usually I used to wait until the bus went live so that we could talk about them and include them on the rankings. But one of the things that happened is, is it takes more than just a couple of days to really start to understand a champion. In many cases, it takes two or three, four months. 
but I'll give you my ideas on them. I did stream uh, the abilities on, I think, Gilly, and I did a video on Ragthor, and my thoughts really have not changed. I think Gilly's going to completely come down to the healing. If the healing is really good, then I think we have a very good champion. I don't see a tremendous amount of utility on her. The damage, I think, might be good, but it's not something that's shouting out to me massive damage machine. I think if the healing is excellent, then we have someone that we're excited about we'll use. We'll get her ranked accordingly. But right now, I am not off the charts excited about the Gilly buff, unfortunately, which does bother me. I was excited about her. And uh, then Ragthor. Ragthor, I think this is a nice gift to people who have sacrificed to get their prestige up, who have sacrificed to for the betterment of their alliance or to move up in alliances. To me, he looks like he's going to be someone who can probably dish out a tremendous amount of damage and not really need synergies to do it. The damage will have to be insanely high, though, to make up for what I feel is a lack of utility. Now, once we start playing it, maybe we'll see that there is a lot, but I don't think it is. And that damage would have to be outrageously high. The game is so complex and so nuanced now that if you're not having utility, if you're not having multiple ways to handle nodes or defenders or things that are thrown at you, and the only tool in your kit is damage, chances are you're not going to be that widely usable in in-game stuff. Doesn't mean he's not good, doesn't mean he's not worth ranking up, but right now, if I just like had to rank him based off only the abilities, I'd put him in the premium somewhere. I put him in the premium somewhere and really the, the main reason he'd be there is because of the prestige. Because, I mean, look at Black Widow Deadly Origin. Her damage is immense and she actually does have some utility. And that's where she is, just because the other champions have more widely usable utilities. So that's where he is. I'm very excited to find out in, in November. We'll have a much better idea. We'll get them ranked and have a great time with it. Uh, thank you so much for watching. I hope you did enjoy this. If you didn't get a chance to, go ahead and click on uh, some of the links here. And I know I put the time steps at the beginning. Um, and, and take a listen to the group that has helped me put this together. I want to thank them again. These are channels uh, that I watch, all of them except for Jacob has a channel. I watch these channels to get better at this game. Some of these channels are more active than others, but they really have put in a tremendous amount of time. I come up with the initial idea. I, you know, We all pay attention to line chats, Discord, YouTube channels. So I come up with the original thinking on this, and then they really go over it with a fine tooth comb. And they are solely responsible for some of these adjustments that we've made, in addition to the comments that you make on this video. I enjoy doing it. This is my favorite video to do every month. I think it's gonna to continue to get better and better. And I really, really appreciate it. Let me know what you think I got right, what you think I got wrong. Be polite about it, right? If it's constructive criticism, you know me, I will most likely read it and I will most likely respond. It might take a while, but I love that interaction. Thank you so much for watching. Take care. I hope you either learned something, were entertained, or even better, a little bit of both. Don't forget to like, subscribe. Thanks so much for watching. Take care.